Oh, 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 we got a new developer's note for the Korean server. So these changes are coming to Korea next week, which should be the either the 26th or the 27th, right? And these changes, there are not a lot of them, but they are pretty big info because it will be a balance patch, it will affect some summoners, there's new skills, all of that. So let's go. First of all, skill balancing of these monsters was adjusted. So, Fire Barrier Captain, Fire Joker, Fire Cobalt Bomber, Fire Imp Champion, Son Goku, I believe, let me check who Son Goku is. Yeah, Son Goku is the Fire Monkey King and Sage is a Pioneer. Fire Pioneer, really? That could be interesting. So, Fire Monkey and Fire Pair. So, I was gonna say, uh, you can see the pattern, it's mostly bombers, but no, it's actually Fire Monkey and Fire Pioneer are getting buffs as well. Or nerfs, who knows. Uh, water is Joker, Cobalt Bomber, Mermaid and uh, Monkey King as well. Okay, so Joker, Cobalt Bombers, Mermaid though, Water Mermaid. I think that will not be as much of a buff as it will be a change, because Mermaid, I think it's like the only unit in the game that can actually remove a bomb without uh, it detonating because as you know if you cleanse a bomb uh, that bomb will detonate right uh, you are not able to fully remove it and it will still do damage whereas the mermaid is actually the only unit that has a skill which is called the move bomb right so yeah presumably that will be more of a change than a buff per se because uh, bombs are getting the work and it might affect that cleanse as well and yeah water monkey king as well and then uh, Wind Cobalt Bomber, World Oracle, so Bombers, Darkness, Joker and Oracle, again Bombers, and Light, Cobalt Bomber as well, that's a Bomber. So yeah, mostly targeted at Bombs it looks like. Uh, and yeah, the, the Bomb effect will be renewed and the Minion skill, Minion most likely the first two monsters, uh, will be adjusted to make it easier to suppress the enemy reinforcement effects and respond to crowd control effects. Oh, what could that mean? I would imagine the bomb would stun, like, it, it gave a stun in the original Sky Arena game, so I can only assume they would make something like that, yeah? Okay, now summoner skill balance changes. These ones are quite interesting, yeah? So, the healing amount and buff level of Kina's water attribute Snow Day, I think that's like the new skill too, right? Uh, has been reduced from a total of 4 times to 2 times. So if you've seen a recent video from Gids, uh, he showcased how you are able to stack uh, the Wind Phoenix uh, for, to like 8 stacks in a single skill use. I think uh, it was mostly targeted at that, right? Because stacking 8 stacks on Teshar in a single Kina skill is a bit nuts. So this is most likely the cause, so you're not able to stack those up that easily. And now new skills. For each summoner you get one skill. So water attribute ice protection skill is added to Kina. Grants healing and a shield. And if a teammate uh, with poison is present. Oh, I wonder if that's poison or any dot. Uh, removes all debuffs and reduces ice protection cooldown. Additionally, it increases the movement speed of all allies whose movement speed is reduced. So good to counter slow and poison. Why is that like a buff for uh, the spider's nest in Path of Growth? V very, very odd buff. Very odd buff. If it's only poison, it's a very odd buff. But it is. If it's all dots, that's insane. Because pretty much all summoners have quite a bit of dots. Like Cleave has two dots on his fire. Uh, Soleta has dots on her wind, I think. Orbia has plenty of dots on her dark and fire, right? So, yeah, that's crazy. Okay, uh, the fire attribute firewall skill is added to Orbia. By the way, for Kina, I think this will be a new skill tree for some reason. Uh, okay, fire attributes firewall is skill added to Orbia. Creates a rectangular wall of flame, uh, removes the target's invincibility and inflicts burns on the first hit. Invincibility. Again, a very rare debuff. Or above. Uh, and possibility, prob or probability reduces defense and increases dark damage if the target is provoked. What is this? Wait. 
It removes invincibility. Okay, so there's a few units like Chloe, Lima, uh, Light Cleave would be more popular ones, right? I don't think there are a lot of invincibility units that are very meta. Okay, uh, then it also reduces defense and increases damage if the target is provoked. Yeah, I don't know. Very, very specific debuff. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. The wind attribute strong wind is added to cleave. Uh, knocks back enemies, reduces evasion, and cancels strengthening effects. That's a strip. Cleave has a strip now. Cleave has a strip now. Oh, that's big. That's big. And I really got into using the wind one. So that could be massive. That could be massive. I don't care about that knockback. I don't care about the evasion. Strip was really needed. Like he has so much trouble dealing with all of the buffs. Nice. Nice. Uh, the wind attribute B skill is added to Soleta. It removes immunity. Oh, Soleta has a strip as well now. The moves immunity grants heal block if the move, so only if you remove immunity, and has a chance to remove one buff if there is no immunity. So you either remove immunity or you remove a buff and you also grant um, heal block if you remove immunity. Now I wonder which skill that is because if you don't know, uh, the Soleta skill 2 has a chance to apply beneficial block effect, right? So. Having a strip into beneficial lock could be a decent combo. Okay, and now Hero Raid Season 3 gear will be available since these are new mythic accessories. So first of all, the Breakthrough Shield has a certain chance to remove shields, invincibility and spell shields from a team member before hitting a target with a shield, invincibility or spell shield. That has to be translated badly. That has to be translated. Okay, but messing with shields, invincibility, and spell shields. Okay, spell shields, like, no unit has it. Like, what? The Light of Kroger, right? And the Wind Paladin, sometimes. So, yeah, that one, I don't know. Invincibility, again, like, what? Wind Paladin, Chloe, Lima. Maybe a Light Clip, right? Um, sure. The move shield. Now shield is a big one. Shield is definitely more popular. Some like Busa or whatever. I wonder if it will move uh work with shield runes as well. But yeah, so far, I'm not a big fan of this set. Not a big fan of this set. I don't know. Compared to the last ones at least, like where you can remove destroy effect, where you can get just immunity at the start of the battle. Those just seem way better, even when off season, right? But we'll, we'll see when it comes out uh, when the season ends, right? Because it's a bit early to guess that. And the second one, Sword of Annihilation. Uh, penetrates the enemy's defense by a certain percentage when making a normal attack while a teammate summon has increased attack speed. Ooh, normal attack I assume is a basic attack, right? Oh, wait. Defense penetration when making a normal attack while teammate summon has increased attack speed. That could potentially be the best PvE set. I think that's gonna be the best PvE set that's available. Because currently there are not a lot of options for PvE, like our immunity and root, that cooldown increase thing, those are not important in PvP, in PvE I mean. Uh, then there's the destroy removal, which is not impo important, and I think, yeah, starting with 5 mana is not important at all. So this, if it works in other areas than just PvP, this is gonna be the new PvE set. Okay, and if we do further, starting with Season 3, you will receive exclusive coins appropriate to the season, and you will barely be able to use those coins to purchase gear, so basically, if you have farmed a lot of coins in, let's say, Season 1, uh, like we have right now in NA and Korea, once Season 2 comes out, you will not be able to buy new gear with those coins. You will need to farm Season 2 coins. I don't know if it will be implemented for us before that happens, but let's say uh, you would get Season 2 coins, and the Season 1 coins you would only be able to spend on Season 1 gear, which, honestly, horrible change. 
horrible change. This will require so much more farming. Like currently, I farm the gear, I have 4,000 coins. What am I supposed to do with those coins? The shop just doesn't have enough useful items there. And now you're telling me I'll have to farm a whole another like 40 entries when that already burned like 40 entries from my previous tickets. Nah, I don't, I don't like this. This, this, again, with Comptas, you have, it's always a good patch. And then you have to throw in a curveball like that to completely ruin it. Oh, I don't know, bro. I don't know. This is, this is horrible, 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 horrible. Okay, exploding Halloween's House of Ghosts will begin and you will be able to obtain these transmogs. So the transmogs have already shown in the developers like conference video. So uh, this is the Shushu, the Undyne and the Dragon Knight. It looks like they will be added to some kind of a shop. Uh, or maybe they not, who knows. It just says the Halloween concept, right? So maybe they will be available to buy, but yeah, Dragon Knight and Undyne, yeah? Also, all passive skills such as Endurance, Notarization, not sure what Notarization is, Continuous Damage and non recoverable skills granted to monsters in the Galarus Ruins are deleted. Trap damage is lowered and the monster's basic movement speed is increased. Please note that the entire content of Galgos will be renewed in the future. Yeah, so as you remember, they mentioned completely changing Galagos, so it looks like it could be a pretty cool, very fast-paced dungeon. If they increase the movement speed to the same movement speed you get when in like those non-enemy stages, right? The trap stage, the chest stage. Imagine how sick the dungeon would be. Like there's like 20 stages and you just try to bounce through all of them. Oh, that would be sick. And yeah, apart from those, those are some, some uh, quality of life changes like the exploration captain finally being added to the guild uh, town. There will be more items at the discount shop. So the discount shop is the general merchant where you can just buy gloves and pickaxes a bit cheaper sometimes. So looks like there will be more items there. Or maybe there will be more different items in general. And then a little bit of a spoiler. This is the plan for next week's update. And the first update in November will add a new summoner transformation system. Change genders? Question mark? That could be cool. Summon friendliness. Um, I have no clue what that is. Summon friendliness. Could that maybe do some kind of monster testing? Like before you summon a monster, hopefully. Not sure. And a new 3 versus 3 battlefield, which was promised. Yep. And the North American server is getting its first anniversary, and Thanksgiving event will be held. First anniversary, we just finished the Korean one and we're going straight there. Hey, hey, the celebration never ends. And with that being said, I'm out. <laughs>